full powered, mid powered or low powered e-mountain bikes. Today we are going to measure the climbing output, the climbing power of these three bikes, compare them to each other to help you decide which is the right option for you. Okay, you're looking for your first or maybe second e-mountain bike to add to the stable and you don't necessarily want that 55 pound bike that you can hardly lift or jump uh, or that uh, big down tube it doesn't doesn't necessarily look like your uh, the bikes that you're used to but you're curious you know does it have enough power does it have enough range will you be able to keep up with your buddies you know will you be able to do your your big rides in a short amount of time so you're intrigued by these SL bikes. Uh, there's a whole new crop of mid-powered bikes. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna measure them on an actual hill, give you comparative data. I don't think this has been done before to this extent and, and really show you the differences between the bikes so you can help make a better choice. All right, you didn't know there were so many categories in, in powered e-mountain bikes, right? But you know, but like all, categories they segment themselves you know people find different uses for them and there's so many uses for these things that uh, folks said you know maybe not it maybe not everyone needs a 60 pound bike maybe they need a 30 pound bike so I'll tell you how they're differentiated so they're powered uh, by an electric motor mid drive always not hub drive and they're measured in two ways torque and power the torque is measured in newton meters and the power is measured in watts now you have the battery as well, we'll talk about that later, uh, measured in watt hours, which is the size of the, the battery or the fuel tank. In the full powered category, this is a score e-mount bike. It's usually typified by newton meters from 70 to 100, so 70 to 100 newton meters. And then the power, meaning the peak power, they all have average power of 250 because that's the law. The peak power is usually around 400, to 600 so that's your full powered e-bike they typically weigh between 50 pounds and 60 pounds which is kind of at the limit of what, what i can lift and then there's this whole new crop of bikes probably is the mid-powered bikes this is the orbea rise an example and they're typified by torque in the you know 50 to 70 newton meters is kind of their sweet spot the wattage is usually typified between 350 and I would say 450 so kind of a narrow range and then over here sometimes they they may merge these two together uh, this was the early uh, early attempt at a lightweight e-mount bike so this is a Levo SL uh, it spearheaded that that lightweight category just because they came out with a bike that's 36 pounds and the Newton meters is usually between 30 and 50 and then the wattage is, I would say, 200 to 300 is kind of the low range. And like I said, sometimes they group these two together. But in this video, I'll make a distinction uh, because uh, there, there's quite a difference between the power that they deliver. How are we doing this test? So I'm excited because we have power meter pedals. And power meter pe pedals allow me to isolate the biggest variable of all. That's why nobody can compare range or power is because the biggest variable uh, is the rider, the trail, and the amount that the rider puts in the pedals. That is a huge variable. Uh, and the, the first two, you can isolate. Same rider, same trail. But then how much effort is the rider putting in? And it, it's, it's, not, it's not effort, it's not heart rate. You know, you're, you're your actual power can still fluctuate, but with a power meter pedal, it, uh, you can really stabilize that. And what I'm after is an average power throughout the duration of the climb. But a little bit about me, you know, mid fifties, it turns out I can hold 300 watts of power for 20 minutes. So I'm still pretty jazzed about that, even though I ride all these e-bikes. So what I'm gonna do for this test is I'm gonna put my power at 200 watts average uh, and the reason for that is it's a range that I can sustain 
uh, and, and do it over and over again. And the other thing is, first I tried to do it with one, 150, you know, I tried to slack off. But then some of these slow powered e-bikes, e-mountain bikes, they don't give you full, full power at 150. You know, I, at 200, I can get everything that these things have to offer. So I'm going to average 200. And how am I going to do it? It's a one mile climb, about 550 feet. So I'm just going to average uh, 200 all the way through from start to finish. And it's going to fluctuate, you know, because, uh, you know, it, it's, it's impossible to put it there. But the average needs to be around 200 right when I hit the top. And I won't fluctuate wildly. If I'm over 200, I'll slow down. If I'm under 200, uh, I'll speed up or I'll put more effort uh, because I can see it in real time. And the other variable that I'm going to control is how much power is the motor putting out. Eco mode, trail mode, I can't work with those because they're pretty random uh, depending on the bike, depending on the manufacturer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do turbo mode, full boost, meaning I'm going to put these all these bikes on full support mode, full assist mode. That way I'm getting everything that they can offer. This test really is trying to measure what the full potential of these motors are and what they can give you uh, when you need it most. Okay, here is our test course, a local hill very close to home so we can repeat it, access it easily. And here is our Levo SL, the top end spec 13,000 when it was new, 37 pounds. And we adjusted the tune to turbo, full support, full peak power. So it will give me everything it has uh, without a lot of effort or with 200 watts. And our course climbs 550 feet in one mile. So not very long, but makes it repeatable and it's scalable as well. So if you had a four mile climb, if you wanted to see how to do it four mile, just multiply by, by four. Um, so, you know, a four mile climb would be 2,200 feet uh, at this rate. So here is my power, uh, the elevation. You can see my power and watch, little fluctuation, but it averages it up out to 199 watts and it starts out steep, lets off a little bit and then ends up steep again. So uh, very typical hard climb. So here is the time. The time is seven minutes and 22 seconds. 12% uh, battery used, average of 8.1 miles per hour. And something to note, uh, we did a fuel EXE uh, it climbed in 705, so a little bit of difference, not as much as we expected. But something with this bike, the Levo SL doesn't give you a lot of torque, you know, 35 millimeters, and it wants a lot from you. So this test is actually advantageous for this bike because it is done at a pretty high RPM, 80, consistent, you know, not a lot of start-stop. This, this bike is not great at start-stop. That's when you need the torque. Um, so it... Uh, it, it did pretty well, uh, better than we expected or experienced on the trail because it's a quite a consistent climb and that's what the, um, the low power bikes are good at. So seven minutes, 22 seconds for a low powered bike. All right, the next bike in the lineup is the Orbea Rise aluminum version. And it is a special bike because it is aluminum, has a big battery, 540 watt hours, big for the category. And it is a detuned version of the Shimano EP8 motor that normally has 85 newton meters. This was throttled down to 60 newton meters. And what resulted is a motor that is runs cool, operates on its sweet spot. You know it has a lot more behind it, so it's very usable. So it is just motoring up this climb. And one difficulty we had was it was tough to maintain 200 watts. So we did a little less than that, but the time we got is five minutes and 50 seconds seconds for a speed of 10 miles an hour. So the, it's more than a minute faster than the low powered bikes, but really uh, it's the speed uh, that you hit it at. and. You know, we'll we'll multiply this, uh, extrapolate 2,000 a 2,000 foot climb, and you know you would be behind by five minutes from your, uh, or ahead by by five minutes on against guys on low powered bikes. So 
very revealing the Orbea Rise mid powered aluminum bike. Alright, the next bike in the video is a full powered one. We're going to use the Canyon Spectral On with the Shimano EP8 motor. It has a 900 watt hour battery. Look how fast it's going. And this is typical of the full powered e bikes. The Levo has a little bit more power, and the Bosch has maybe a hair more as well. But EP8 is what I think most people use. It represents the full powered or full fat category well. And here's the time it is 4 minutes and 56 seconds for an average speed of 11.9 miles an hour, almost 12 miles an hour. So, you know, 720 to 456, significantly faster. The speed is much higher, and that shows you the difference. Uh, in full powered mode the something interesting is it was hard to put in 200 watts of of effort of power because you know the pedals are just spinning they're just getting away from you so on a full powered e-bike yeah, on on full turbo it's very hard to contribute a lot all right there you go interesting test huh we knew the full powered bikes were faster but how much now we have some numbers so the canyon spectral on did it in 4 minutes and 56 seconds, almost 12 miles an hour. Or Bay Arise at 5.57, a minute slower, 10 miles an hour. And then the Fuel EXE uh, 8.4, 7.05. And then the Levo SL, which we showed, is 7.22. So there are the gaps. And, you know, just extrapolate this. If you have a 2,000 foot hill, so that one minute difference will be four minutes. You know, that's how much slower you are or how far you will be behind from your buddies. So uh, for just for for humor, we put in, or for reference really, we put in a, a few other bikes. The Santa Cruz Blur at full effort uh, coming in at 300 watts, uh, kind of a personal record, 1118. So a full effort on a lightweight cross country bike, about 11 minutes. The Blur XC at 200 watts is 1643, and uh, that's a 23 pound mountain bike. And the LaSalle Peak, an all mountain bike, 1717. So, not much difference between the Blur on and the LaSalle on this particular test. You know, just a constant climb, and you know, kind of revealing, you know, what the e bikes, what the e mountain bikes uh, do in reference to each other and in reference to other bikes. So what is the conclusion? The conclusion is you have options if you are looking for your first bike, go with a full powered one because, and, and if you're gonna use that power. If you're never gonna use that power, I would say go for the mid powered one, you know, or Bay Arise, and then we're gonna test the new transition, the new Pivot Shuttle SL uh, to see if uh, how they compare in this the key with the lower powered bikes is they come with very small batteries to usually three 360 watt hours so it's key to have an extender battery so you could extend your range the Urbea Rise aluminum is a special bike because it can it comes with a 540 watt hour battery I hope you found this useful I certainly did I knew the numbers were somewhere around there but I had really had no idea and we're kind of come up with range testing in the future so tell you exactly how much range in, in these conditions these uh, bikes will differ. And then we're also gonna do uh, motor testing, compare the Bros to the Bosch, to the EPA, to see if, what the difference are, differences are uh, on, on this kind of test. We'll also experiment with tires and, and adding 20 pounds of weight and see what, what they do. All right, thanks a ton everyone.